كل بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته so إن شاء الله today will be will be beginning a new book Ibn Fawzan al Fawzan. May Allah preserve him. And this is one of his books that he authored <coughs> explaining the original work of Sheikh al Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab. So the Sheikh he begins and he says, Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. والصلاه والسلام على نبيه الصادق الامين نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين وبعد فهذا كتاب في علم التوحيد وقد را ولا سيما كتب الشيخ الاسلام ابن تيميه وكتب العلامه ابن العلامه ابن القيم وكتب شيخ الاسلام محمد ابن عبد الوهاب وتلاميذه من لتكون الأعمال صحيحة مقبولة إن الله نافعة للعاملين أصلي مستر ورد أوت ذات بوجوبه لتكون الأعمال صحيحة مقبولة إن الله نافعة للعاملين خصوصا واننا في زمان كثرت فيه فيه التيارات المنحرفه تيار الالحاد وتيار التصوف والرهبنه وتيار القبوريه خطيرة ما لم يكن المسلم مصلحا بسلاح العقيدة الصحيحة المرنكزة المرتكزة على الكتاب والسنة بتعليم العقيدة الصحيحة لأبناء المسلمين من مصادرها الأصيلة وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وآله وصحبه So then the Shaykh he, he begins with this introduction by praising Allah Jalla wa Ala and sending salutations and blessings upon the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and he mentions he brief mentions just an introduction with regards to this book and opening and he says He says this book 
covers the knowledge of Tawheed, Islamic monotheism. And he said that in authoring this book, he uh, used sources uh, from various books of various well-known scholars of the past. Uh, the concepts and the knowledge that's covered within the book to make it easy to understand for the reader. He goes on to say also in this introduction um, that the knowledge of Tawheed Because it's the most important in our religion. He also mentions within this introduction that in modern times with the spread of misguided Like as as a to to defend yourself, because without the knowledge of Tawheed, you'll end up going astray. This is what the Sheikh mentions here. So goes on to say, what. In and that of ourselves by learning the correct knowledge from the correct places and the correct sources. He then goes on to start the book. <laughs> so the sheikhs in this first chapter is going to explain uh, in very sections the deviations in the life in, so in 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 the life of a human the deviations that can occur and from an uh, from a, a historical point of view with regards to disbelief and atheism and polytheism and hypocrisy to cover these topics and in the first section he's going to cover uh deviations in the life you know in human life in our lives that we may come across some of people can fall into or that we come across in life then the next section will cover um, polytheism, its definition and its types. Then it will go on to cover kufr, disbelief, its definition and its types. And then it will go on to cover hypocrisy, its definition and its types. And then the Sheikh will also finally, within this chapter, in the final section, will uh, clarify the reality of the following. Uh, Ignorance, uh, fisks, which is sin, sin, uh, misguidance, and uh, turning away from the deen. Its types, its uh, its types, and its rulings. So the sheikh is going to explain all of this within this first chapter. So we will start the first section. The sheikh says, al fi hayat al So 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 deviations in the life of a person. That's probably the best way to say. It. The Shaykh he goes on to say here that he says, خَلَقَ اللَّهُ الْخَلْقِ لِإِبَادَتِهِ وَهَيَّ أَلَهُمْ مَا يُعِينُهُمْ عَلَيْهَا مِنْ رِزْقِهِ قَالَ تَعَالَى وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ رِزْقٍ وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ يُطْئِمُونَ 
in Allah huwa ar-razaq dhul quwwatil matin so this is from surah ad-dhariyat verse 56 to 58 and the shaykh says that Allah created us or created the creation to worship him and he prepared for them that which will aid them upon this um worship from provisions etc and then the shaykh brings an ayah from the quran let me just get the translation of that and i allah created not the jinns and humans except they should worship me alone i seek not any provision from them i provision for themselves or for my creatures nor do i ask that they should feed me i feed themselves or my creatures verily allah is the all provider owner of power the most strong so that's uh, the meaning of of the ayahs that we read then the shaykh goes on to say one nafs bi fitratiha idha turikat kanat muqirra kanat muqirratun lillahi bil ilahiya mahabbatan lillah ta'buduhu la tushrik bihi shay'a walakin yufsiduha wa yanharifu biha an dhalika ma yuzayyinu laha shayatin al ins wal jin bima yuhi ba'duhum ila ba'din zukhruf al qawl ghurura fa at tawhid markuz fi al fitr wa al shirk tariq wa dakhil alayha qala ta'ala fa aqim wajhaka lid din hanifan fitrata allah allati fatara an nas alayha la tabdila li khalqillah that's from surah ar-rum verse 3 we we'll love look at that in a second the meaning of that so the shaykh he says <coughs> that the soul um and its natural disposition is that if it was if the soul was left to be then it would it would affirm allah it would affirm the existence of allah that's his natural disposition the soul it affirms allah that allah exists uh um and would worship allah and love allah and worship allah and not associate any partners in worship alongside allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the shaykh says however um it, it, the soul can become corrupted so the soul becomes corrupted and deviates from this natural disposition of islamic monotheism and the shayateen from the jinn and mankind they beautify all kinds of falsehoods or falsehood to the soul up until the point it leaves this natural disposition and becomes corrupted and then therefore starts worshiping other than allah committing uh, 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 sins and other than that but the main point here the shaykh is uh, trying to bring home here is about shirk that the once the soul is corrupted and taken away from its natural disposition or its natural state that Allah created it upon then it will fall it falls into shirk then the shaykh uh, brings the ayah from surah ar-rum so if you have a look at the meaning of that so hold on a sec So set you O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam your face towards the religion of pure Islamic monotheism Hanifan worship none but Allah alone Allah's fitra ai Allah's Islamic monotheism with which he has created mankind no change let there be in uh, ai khalqillah uh, ai the religion of Allah Islamic monotheism that is a straight religion but most of men know not so this is a, this is the whole ayah that and the ending of that as well Then the Sheikh says waqala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kullu mawludin yuladu ala alfitra fa abawahu yuhawdanihi aw yunassiranihi aw yumajjisani fa alasl fi bani adam at-tawhid then the Sheikh says and he mentions the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says every newborn is born upon the natural state or natural disposition 
So his parents either make him a Jew or make him a Christian or make him a, 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 a major like Majus fire worshipper or other than that. And the Sheikh says, therefore, the foundation or the starting point or the foundation is uh, in Bani Adam, in the, in the children of Adam, is a Tawheed, Islamic monotheism. The Sheikh then goes on to say, what deen al Islam min ahdi Adam alayhi salam woman woman jaa ba'dahu min zurriyatihi qurunan tawila qala ta'ala kana al nasu ummatan wahidatan fa ba'atha Allahu an nabiyyina mubashshirina wa mundhirin. So then the Sheikh goes on to say that the religion, the way of life, al Islam, from the time of Adam alayhi salam, and whoever came after him from his progeny many 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 you know centuries and then the sheikh mentions an ayah and he says that allah said and he mentions the ayah that we read in arabic surah to baqarah if we go to verse 213 in surah baqarah we'll see and the meaning of that is mankind were one community and allah sent prophets with glad tidings and warnings and with them he sent the scripture in truth. So this is the part that the Shaykh mentions. Then the Shaykh goes on to say, وَأَوَّلُ مَا حَدَثَ الشِّرْكِ وَالْإِنْحِرَافِ عَنِ الْأَقِيدَةِ فِي قَوْمِ نُوحٍ فَكَانَ عَلَيْهِ السَّمْ أَوَّلُ رَسُولُ إِنَّا أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ كَمَا أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَى نُوحٍ وَالنَّبِيِّينَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ So then the Shaykh says, the first occurrence um, of shirk and deviance uh, deviating away from the correct creed was in the people of Nuh and so he was the first uh, a messenger that was sent to the people and then the sheikh mentions ayah from surah Nisa verse 163 so if we go and have a look at that now we will see what's being said Verily, we have inspired you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as we inspired Nuh, Noah, and the prophets after him. So this is what the Shaykh has mentioned here. This is just that part of the ayah. Then the Shaykh goes on to say, Qala ibn Abbas, ka bayna Adam wa Nuh, alayhim as-salam, ashrata qurunin, kulluhum ala al-islam. Qala ibn al-qayyim, wa hadha al-qawlu huwa al-sawabu qat'an. فَإِنَّ قِرَاءَةَ أَبِي بْنُ كَعْبْ يَعْنِي فِي آيَةِ الْبَقْرَةِ فَاخْتَلَفُوا فَبَعَثَ اللَّهُ النَّبِيِّينَ So then in this paragraph, the Shaykh goes on to say that Ibn Abbas رضي الله عنه said he said that the, uh, that the, the Adam uh, between Adam and Nuh عليه السلام were 10 centuries. So the time, the gap was 10 centuries. And between, in all of those 10 centuries, the people were upon Al-Islam, upon a tawheed Islamic monotheism. And then Ibn, Ibn Qayyim said, and this, what's been said here is correct, outright correct, categorically correct. For indeed, he said that the, the reading of Abi ibn Ka'ab, meaning in, uh, with regards to this uh, ayah, uh, with regards to the ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah, فَاخْتَلَفُوا فَبَعَثَ اللَّهُ النَّبِيِّينَ that they differed, or they, they differed, so Allah sent the prophets. The Shaykh will explain further, he says, وَيَشْهَدُوا لِهَذِي الْقِرَاءَ قَوْلُوا تَعَالَى وَمَا كَانَ النَّاسُ إِلَّا أُمَّةٌ وَاحِدًا فَاخْتَلَفُوا so that's from Surah to Yunus as well, what's being mentioned. That the people were one nation upon one religion, i.e. Islamic monotheism, a Tawheed. Then they differed. And, and this is the reason, as we know, why the uh, prophets and messengers were sent to bring back people to the natural uh, worship, natural state, which is a Tawheed, Islamic monotheism, to worship Allah alone and not associate any partners with him. So the Sheikh goes on to say, he says, يريد 
رحمه الله أن بعثة النبيين سببها الاختلاف عما كانوا عليه من الدين الصحيح كما كانت العرب بعد ذلك على دين إبراهيم عليه السلام حتى حتى جاء عمر بن لحي الخزاعي فغير دين إبراهيم وجلب الأسنام إلى أرض العرب وإلى أرض الحجاز بصفة خاصة فعبدت من دون الله وانتشر الشرك في هذه البلاد المقدسة وما جاورها إلى أن بعث الله نبيه محمدا خاتم النبيين صلى الله عليه وسلم فدعا الناس إلى التوحيد واتباع ملة إبراهيم وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى عادت أقيدة التوحيد وملة إبراهيم وكسر الأسنام وأكمل الله به الدين وأتم به النعمة على العالمين وصارت على نهجه القرون المفضلة من صدر هذه الأمة So then the Sheikh goes on to say that what's wanted from what was said in the earlier paragraph, may Allah have mercy upon him, what he was saying is that the reason for the sending of the prophets is the, the differences that the, that the people began to see or have with each other in their deen. Because before that they were upon Tawheed and then as time went on they started differing um, as mentioned earlier because of the shayateen of mankind and jinn taking them away from the uh, Tawheed of Allah. So the Shaykh he goes on to say he goes for example he says like how the Arabs uh, after Ibrahim alayhi salam they were upon Tawheed up until the point where somebody called Amr ibn Luhay al Khuzai, he changed the deen of Ibrahim and he brought idols and statues and the likes to the land of the Arabs and especially in the area called Al Hijaz in a particular way. And the people started worshipping alongside Allah, they started worshipping these idols, i.e., committing shirk. And the Sheikh says that shirk spread. In the lands, in the blessed, these blessed lands, the 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 the, the uh, uh, shirk or polytheism is spread, and in its neighboring areas, spread everywhere, basically. Up until the point Allah sent uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the seal of the prophets. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi as we know, he called the people to tawhid, Islamic monotheism, and to follow the way. Of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, as in Tawheed, and he fought hard and strived uh, uh, in doing that and reaching those goals with the help of Allah Jalla up until the point that the correct creed of Tawheed, Islamic monotheism, returned, and the people returned to the way and what Ibrahim alayhi salam was upon. I Tawheed, Tawheed, Islamic monotheism. And as we know, the idols were broken and uh, they were broken and they were destroyed and Allah completed uh, the deen, the deen of Islam and com uh, completed the deen and completed his favor upon the world. And, and then after that, what came after that, the the uh, virtuous generations, the three, virt particularly the three virtuous generations that came after the Prophet Sallallahu and they were, they are or were the best example or are the best example for the Muslims to look back at them and take them as an example, the Sahaba, the uh, the uh, the Atba Tabi'in or the Tabi'in and the Atba Tabi'in, these three virtuous generations. And that's an example that we need to follow in their footsteps. So, 
the Sheikh goes on to say إلى أن فشى الجهل في القرون المتاخرة ودخلها الدخيل من الديانات الأخرى فعاد الشرك إلى كثير إلى كثير من هذه الأم هذه الأمة بسبب بسبب دعاة الضلال وبسبب البناء على على القبور متمثلا بتعذيم الأولياء والصالحين والدعاء المحبة لهم حتى بنيت الأضرحة على قبورهم واتخذت أوثانا تعبد من دون الله بأنواع القربات من دعاء واستغاثة وغبح ونظر لمقاماتهم وسم 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 الشرك توصلا بالصالحين وإظهارا لمحبتهم وليس إبادة وليس إبادة لهم بزعمهم ونصوا أن هذا هو قول المشركين الأولين حيث يقولون ما نعبدهم إلا ليقربونا إلى الله زلفا So then the Sheikh goes, in contrast to that, the virtuous generations which were at the first three generations of Islam were the best of Al-Islam, the generations of Islam, the uh, Ummah of uh, our Prophet wasallam. After that, the later generations spread ignorance in the latter centuries and generations. Ignorance spread open to our point. If you reflect, you can see the vast sheer amount of ignorance Everywhere you look, every turn you take, there's ignorance, sadly. And the Sheikh says, because of this ignorance, then uh, then things have entered upon the people's religion, their deen. Things have entered upon them. Falsehood has entered upon them. Shirk has entered upon them. Um, why? The Sheikh says, why has Shirk entered this Ummah? Why has it entered and why has it found itself here and people practicing it he it says it's because of the callers to misguidance those so-called people um, who call to misguidance and they call people to misguidance in the garb of Islam um, and also and here are some of the other examples that the Sheikh brings and this happens actually right, right on this day this is happening the Sheikh says for example a uh, building upon the graves so as we know uh islamically the the grave shouldn't be more than hand span from the ground it should be leveled basically no more uh, than hand span from the ground but as we know there's many graves out there um that are way higher than this and they have been made into shrines uh, tombs and the like This is what the Sheikh is saying, and particularly for in the name of so-called righteous people, whether they were righteous or not, people have built these tombs, these shrines for these oliya that they call oliya or righteous people. And then what they do is, they say out of love, you know, we've built these tombs, these shrines upon their graves. And then what's happened, as we know, is that people start, doing acts of worship in those places. They start committing shirk in those places. They come with uh, particularly dua, which is, as we know, dua, supplication, is a type of worship. And as we know, any type of worship is exclusive, exclusively for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It cannot be for anybody else. All worship is for Allah. So some of the types the Sheikh bring, uh, brings examples of here is uh, supplicating. Supplications are people make, they'll say, oh, you know, um, they'll say, oh, this is a person's a wali, so he's a close friend of Allah, this person's a righteous person, etc. Uh, uh, bring those kinds of examples. And then they will uh, say, oh, well, I have to call upon this person's name, so-and-so's name, because that's the only way my worship will be accepted. And this is shirk, and the shirk says, this is the exact same thing that the the pagan Arabs were saying to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Exact same thing they were saying. And the Sheikh brings the ayah from the Quran, from Surah Al-Zumar, verse 3, that we read in Arabic. And if we look at the, the meaning here, uh, give me a second to pull it up, we'll see what the Sheikh is trying to tell us here. The Sheikh says, Surely the religion, i.e. the worship and the obedience is for Allah only. And those who take awliya, protectors and helpers besides him say, 
this is the part we need to focus on. They say, we worship them only that they may bring us near to Allah. So this is what they say. And they'll say in the name of a wasila. You'll hear it. People saying wasila, tawassul. But really, it's shirk. And the shaykh goes on to say, then he continues, he says, so then the Sheikh says that with this, this is shirk. He says this is shirk that the people have fallen into from previous times and in modern times. And he says most of all this, most of these people, they believe in the Tawheed of Rububiya as meaning they believe in Allah's Lordship that Allah is the Lord of everything however they commit shirk in worship so as we know that Tawheed is three types Lordship it's in worship and it's also in the name in Allah's names and attributes so if any of that gets taken away or shared with anybody else other than Allah, then, he's commit, then the person commits shirk. And these people are committing shirk basically um, in, in worship. They're sharing their worship with other than Allah. And, and then they fall into shirk. And as we know, mentioned in previous books, this takes them out of the fold of Islam and it nullifies their deeds. The Sheikh says, and he brought the ayah there for us from Surah to Yusuf. So if we have a look at this, and inshallah, we're almost finished now. So, Surah to Yusuf, verse 106. Let's have a read. And most of them believe not in Allah except that they attribute partners unto Him. I.e., they are mushrikun, polytheists. As the Sheikh mentioned. Then he goes on to say, وَلَمْ يَجْحَدْ وُجُودَ الرَّبِّ إِلَّا نَزَرْ يَسِيرْ مِنَ الْبَشَرْ كَافِرْعُونَ وَالْمَلَاحِدَةَ الدَّهْرِيِّينَ وَشُيُعِينَ uh, the the presence of Allah or the existence of Allah except a, a few of the people ex except a few examples a limited examples for example Pharaoh and the atheists and the communists of our times so their um, disavowing or um their approach in this or their turning away and denying of the existence of Allah is from is from the perspective of um, arrogance it's due to arrogance and really inside them deep down they know that Allah exists that there is a Lord but because of their uh, arrogance uh, outwardly uh, they uh, they say that uh, you know they, they pronounce the atheism and then the Sheikh brings an ayah for what he's saying and he mentions verse one, uh, verse 14 of surah an naml so let's have a look at that verse 14 we'll, we'll read the whole whole verse and they belied them those ayat wrongfully and arrogantly though their own selves were convinced thereof i.e. those ayat are from allah and musa moses is the messenger of allah in truth but they disliked to obey musa moses and hatred and hated to believe in his message of monotheism uh, so see what was the end of the Mufsidun, disbelievers, disobedient to Allah, evil doers, liars. So that's clear to us, inshallah. Then in the final paragraph for today, inshallah, the Shaykh he goes on to say, وَأُقُولُهُمْ تَعْرِفْ أَنَّ كُلَّ مَخْلُوكٍ لَا بُدَّ لَهُمْ مِنْ خَالِقٍ وَكُلُّ مَوْجُودٍ لَا بُدَّ لَهُمْ مِنْ مُوْجِدٍ وَأَنَّ نِظَامَ هَذَا الْقَوْمِ المنضبط الدقيق لا بد له من مدبر حكيم قدير عليم من أنكره فهو إما فاقد لأقله أو 
مخابر قد ألغى أقله وصفي نفسه وهذا لا إبرة به So then the Shaykh, he finishes this off about these atheists or the ones who deny uh, the existence of uh, Allah. He says that their intellects know that everything that is created necessitates that there is a creator. And everything that exists, there has to be one that brought it into existence. And that the that the affairs, the affairs and the routines of this universe, the 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 level of um, uh, preciseness, yeah, and the level of detail, no doubt that there needs there is someone who disposes these affairs. There's a wise there's some there is a wise Lord, I Allah. There's a, a, a some someone obviously Allah here is. Wise, the one who disposes these affairs, who takes care of these affairs, who um, you know, etc., and an all-knowing, all-wise, all-capable, or one who disposes of these affairs of the universe. And then the Sheikh says, whoever disavows this and denies it, either he has lost his mind, or he is arrogant, and he's going against his kind of cancelling out his intellect or his logic that or his brain that's telling him otherwise or oh, he's a fool and the sheikh says there is no uh, lesson within that to take if a person's like this that they've lost they've lost themselves with in either of these situations especially the one who um is arrogant and knows the truth but is denying it for whatever reason that may be so inshallah we'll stop there because that completes that, that section and we'll start the next section inshallah next week bin night ta'ala. So uh we'll be from half seven uh UK time inshallah. Uh, we'll keep we'll stick to that time for now uh, and then we'll we'll change if we need to uh inshallah but I will let you all know if the time changes. Barakallah fikum. Subhanakallahu wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant wa astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.